In the previous lecture, we have been talking about the theory of cointegration, which is a crucial operation to be able to find pairs of stocks in the pairs trading strategy. So we are going to talk about how to find these pairs. And of course, we have to import several libraries at the beginning, such as Matplotlib. We are going to download the data from Yahoo Finance. We will use Pandas data frame and we are going to use linear regression. This module is present in SciPy. So if you haven't installed SciPy, then you have to go to preferences or settings on Windows. You have to navigate to your project interpreter and you have to search and install SciPy. Okay, I have already installed it, so there is no need for me to install SciPy. And of course, we need stats models because after the regression, we are going to use the augmented Dickey Fuller test to make sure that we have a stationary process. Okay, so what do we have to do? First of all, we have to download the data from Yahoo Finance. And sorry for that, I am not going to implement it again from scratch because we have implemented it several times. We have the stock, we have the start date, the end date. We download the data from Yahoo Finance. We are dealing with adjusted closing prices and we transform the dictionary into a data frame. Okay, after that, let's create the plot pairs. It is going to be a function with the pair one and the pair two. And what do we have to do? First, we have to create subplot. So we have axis one, axis two. So let's create the PLT subplot and we need two subplots. Then we define the title such as pair of stocks. Then we plot the first data on the first axis. Then we have the second axis plot data two and PLT that show finally. So what do we have to do? We have the name is equals to the main. So let's create the main function. We are going to deal with a start date and end date. The start date is April the 1st, 2011, and the end date is 2013, January the 1st. So the first step in the pairs trading strategy is to find pairs of stocks that are highly correlated. And of course, it is not that straightforward to do so. We have to look for stocks within the same industry that have the same behavior in the long run. So the first stock we are going to consider is ExxonMobil Corporation. The ticker name is XOM. So this is the historical data in the past five years. And the second stock is Chevron Corporation, CVX. So again, we have the historical data in the past five years. And of course, we can assume that there is a strong correlation between these two stocks because they are in the same industry and the companies are very, very similar to each other. So they are in the energy sector. Both of the companies have something to do with natural gas and oil. So they are very similar to each other. So this is why we download the first pair as XOM. This is the ExxonMobil. And we have the second pair as CVX, so Chevron. And if we plot the two pairs, so we have the plot pairs as far as the first pair and the second pair is concerned. If we save and rerun the application, and of course, sorry for that, there's a typo, we have to use subplots. Okay, and if I rerun the application, then we have managed to download the two stocks. So as you can see, we have the ExxonMobil and we have the Chevron related stock prices. And as you can see, there's a high correlation between the price movements of these companies. So here, for example, the price keeps decreasing and it is true for the other stock as well. Then there's an uptrend here, there's a downtrend, it is the same. So we can come to the conclusion just by taking a closer look at these plots that there is a high correlation between the stocks of these two companies. Okay, so let's try to create a scheduler plot. So let's create a death scheduler plot with a data one and data two. What do we have to do? We have to call the scheduler function as far as Matplotlib is concerned with data one values and data two values. What does it mean? The data in this case is going to contain the dates. So if we print out, we print the pair one, for example, and after that, we print the pair one dot values. Let's see what's going to happen. If I save and rerun the application, 
First of all, we print out the pair itself and as you can see, the index is the date. So we have a price column and we have the dates accordingly. If we call the values, then we get the price column values exclusively. So basically these are the adjusted closing prices associated with that given stock. What's crucial that it is a two dimensional array by the way. So we have the values exclusively and this is exactly what we need for the scheduler plot. Of course we have the X label as XOM, we have PLT, Y label as CVX and finally we can call the PLT.show. So if we download the data, we plot the pairs and then we plot the scheduler plot, sorry for that, with pair 1 and pair 2. Let's save and rerun the application. So we have downloaded the data and then this is the scheduler plot. So we can take a closer look at this plot and it is quite obvious that there is a linear relationship between the two stock prices, which means that there is some sort of correlation between these two stocks. And of course, this is exactly what we have been talking about in a theoretical section. So in this case, we have the two time series. And if we plot the two time series, so we have X and we have Y. In the concrete implementation, we are dealing with stock prices as the given time series. But anyways, there is a relationship between the two stocks, which means that with the help of linear regression, we can find these alpha and beta parameters. So we can use regression and estimate the strength of relationship between the two time series. So let's try to use linear regression and the beta coefficient is going to define the relationship between the two stocks. Okay, and you may pose the question that why do we have to use values and something like this? Let's take a look at what is the difference between the two approaches. If we print out pair one dot values and if we print out the pair one dot values, we would like to keep every single row as far as the zeroth column is concerned. So if I save and rerun the application, then first of all, we get the plot, of course, and then we will get the data. So as you can see with the first approach, so as far as pair one dot values are concerned, we get the values, but these values are located in a two dimensional array. We have an outer array and then every single sub array contains just a single item. And if we get all the rows as far as the zeroth column is concerned, then let's take a look what's going to be the result. The result is going to be a simple one dimensional array with all the values. And of course, this is exactly what we want to use during linear regression. Okay, so this is exactly what's happening. We have the two time series, the company's related stock prices, and we try to fit a linear line on the data set and we get the coefficients. So the result is going to contain the coefficient. So if we print out the result, then of course it is going to contain every relevant information. So we have the data set, okay, and we have the slope, we have the intercept, we have the R value, we have the P value and so on. We are after the slope because this is going to define the relationship between the two entities. So what do we have to do? We have to construct the so-called residual series. Residuals is equals to pair one minus the result dot slope. The slope is the beta value 1.03 approximately multiplied by pair two. You may pose the question that why do we have to do something like this? This is exactly how we can check cointegration. Yt minus beta xt and this is the residual series and we have to check whether this entity is a stationary process or not. And this is why we can use statistical tests. So this is exactly what we do. We have the residuals, which is the pair one minus the beta, which is the slope of the linear regression model multiplied by pair two. And then we have to check whether this residual series is stationary or not. And we are going to use the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. It is quite an important approach in statistics 
as you can see, we have a null hypothesis that a unit root is present in the time series sample. So you can check this article on Wikipedia and you can come to the conclusion that when the process has no unit root, it is stationary and hence exhibits reversion to the mean. And this is how we can test whether the residual is a stationary time series, which means that it exhibits reversion to the mean because this is exactly what we want to do. If the combination of these stocks follow a mean reversion process, it means that we can use pairs trading strategy and statistical arbitrage with the help of combined long and short positions in order to make a profit. Okay, so what do we have to do? We can use the augmented Dickie Fuller test. So this is why we have imported this TS and we can use the augmented Dickey Fuller function on the residuals and then we can print out the ADF. So if I save and run the application, then first of all, we get the plots. This is the value that we have to compare with the confidence levels. So as you can see, we have minus 3.4. And if we check these confidence levels, it is smaller than the 10% value, it is smaller than the 5% value, but unfortunately it is greater than the 1% value. So what does it mean? That we can say it with 95% probability that the residual series is a stationary process. So what does it mean? It means that with 95% confidence level, we can use these two stocks, so Chevron and Axonmobile, Mobile stock prices within the range 2011 and 2013 in order to apply the pair trading strategy. Because within this time interval, these stock prices are co-integrated, which means that there is a high correlation in the long run. Of course, if we are dealing with another time interval, for example, up to 2020, and we save and rerun the application, then we will come to the conclusion that there is no co-integration. So if we check the scheduler plot, then as you can see, there is no significant linear relationship between the stock prices, which means that if we check the value, it is minus 0.77. So this is the augmented Dickey Fuller test. Minus 0.77 is not smaller than the value associated with 10%. So we can come to the conclusion that there is no co-integration. There is no significant relationship between these two stocks. So this is why it is absolutely crucial to consider a given time interval and we can come to the conclusion that if we are dealing with these stocks within the range 2011 and 2013 then we can come to the conclusion that there is a significant linear relationship which means that there is a significant correlation between the stock prices so with the help of co-integration we have managed to found two companies and we are going to use the stocks of these companies within this time interval to apply the pairs trading strategy. Thanks for watching.